Definitions of theology Other definitions of theology are often given. 1. Sometimes the word is restricted to its etymological meaning, a discourse concerning God. Orpheus and Homer were called theologians among the Greeks, because their poems treated of the nature of the gods. Aristotle classed the sciences under the heads of physics, mathematics, and theology, i.e., those which concern nature, number, and quantity, and that which concerns God. The Father spoke of the Apostle John as the theologian, because in his Gospel and Epistles the divinity of Christ is rendered so prominent. The word is still used in this restricted sense when opposed to anthropology, soteriology, ecclesiology, as departments of theology in its wider sense. 2. Theology is sometimes said to be the science of the supernatural. But what is the supernatural? The answer to that question depends on the meaning assigned to the word nature. If by nature is meant the external world as governed by fixed laws, then the souls of men and other spiritual beings are not included under the term. In this use of the word nature, the supernatural is synonymous with the spiritual, and theology, as the science of the supernatural, is synonymous with pneumatology. If this view be adopted, psychology becomes a branch of theology, and the theologian must, as such, teach mental philosophy. The word nature is, however, often taken in a wider sense, so as to include man. Then we have a natural and a spiritual world. And the supernatural is that which transcends nature in this sense, so that what is supernatural is of necessity also superhuman. But it is not necessarily superangelic. Again, nature may mean everything out of God, then the supernatural is the divine, and God is the only legitimate subject of theology. In no sense of the word, therefore, is theology the science of the supernatural. Hooker says, theology is the science of divine things. If by divine things, or, the things of God, he meant the things which concern God, then theology is restricted to a discourse concerning God, if he meant the things revealed by God, according to the analogy of the expression, things of the Spirit as used by the Apostle in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14, then the definition amounts to the more definite one given above. 3. A much more common definition of theology, especially in our day, is that it is the science of religion. The word religion, however, is ambiguous. Its etymology is doubtful. Cicero refers it to religia, to go over again, to consider. Religio, is then consideration, devout observance, especially of what pertains to the worship and service of God. Religions, is devout, conscientious. Religiousus, in a good sense, is the same as our word religious, in a bad sense, it means scrupulous, superstitious. Religentum es apportit, religiosum nephers. Augustine and Lactantius derive the word from religare, to bind back. Augustine says, Ipse Deus enim fons nostri beatudinus, ipse omnis appetitionius ist finis. Hunk elegance vel potius religentes amisaramus enim negligence, hunk ergo religentes, undit religio dicta prohibita, ad um delection tendimus ut. Perveniendo quiescamus. And Lactantius, vinculo pietatis abstricti, deo relegati sumus, und ipsa religio nomen accipit, non, Ut Cicero interpretatus ist, a religendo, five according to this religio is the ground of obligation. It is that which binds us to God. Subjectively, it is the inward necessity of union with God. Commonly the word religion, in its objective sense, means modus deum colendi, as when we speak of the pagan, the Mohammedan, or the Christian religion. Subjectively, it expresses a state of mind. What that state characteristically is, is very variously stated. Most simply it is said to be the state of mind induced by faith in God, and a due sense of our relation to him. Or as Wegscheider expresses it, e qualis et constans animi affectio, qua homo, necessitudinum suam iandem qui ternum, qua ei cum summo omnium rerum auctor ac moderator sanctissimo intercedit, intimo sensu complexus, cogitations, voluntates et action suas ad. Hume refer studit. Or, as more concisely expressed by. Brett Schneider, faith in the reality of God, with a state of mind and mode of life in accordance with that faith. Or, more vaguely, recognition of the mutual relation between God and the world, Fisher, or, the recognition of a superhuman causality in the human soul and life, Thiel. Faith founded on feeling in the reality of the ideal, Jacobi. The feeling of absolute dependence, Schleiermacher. 
the observance of the moral law as a divine institution, Kant. Faith in the moral order of the universe, Fichte. The union of the finite with the infinite or God's coming to self-consciousness in the world, Schelling. This diversity of views as to what religion is, is enough to prove how utterly vague and unsatisfactory must be the definition of theology as the science of religion. Besides, this definition makes theology entirely independent of the Bible. For, as moral philosophy is the analysis of our moral nature, and the conclusions to which that analysis leads, so theology becomes the analysis of our religious consciousness, together with the truths which that analysis evolves. And even Christian theology is only the analysis of the religious consciousness of the Christian, and the Christian consciousness is not the natural religious consciousness of men as modified and determined by the truths of the Christian scriptures, but it is something different. Some say it is to be referred to a new life transmitted from Christ. Others refer everything distinctive in the religious state of Christians to the church, and really merge theology into ecclesiology. We have, therefore, to restrict theology to its true sphere, as the science of the facts of divine revelation so far as those facts concern the nature of God and our relation to him, as his creatures, as sinners, and as the subjects of redemption. All these facts, as just remarked, are in the Bible. But as some of them are revealed by the works of God, and by the nature of man, there is so far a distinction between natural theology, and theology considered distinctively as a Christian science. With regard to natural theology, there are two extreme opinions. The one is that the works of nature make no trustworthy revelation of the being and perfections of God, the other, that such revelation is so clear and comprehensive as to preclude the necessity of any supernatural revelation.